Welcome back to the channel. And now this is the first video in a new series where we're going to be taking a look at different websites um, from sites like this Web Design Inspiration and just picking one and then showing you how I would go about recreating this in HTML and CSS and maybe with a little bit of JavaScript thrown in. So first I'm just looking to find one um, to work on first. How about this one just here, um, bonfire.com. So what we're going to be doing in this video is just setting out um, the first few steps to building it and setting up Atom um, with a folder for this um, site. So let's go to Atom straight away and create a new folder and a file that we'll start working in. So add new folder, bonfire, and then we'll just add a index.html in here to get started. Now to begin with we're just going to look through um, the site here and see what type of elements that we'll need to add. So we've got a, a header at the top here with a navigation, um, some buttons on the right, a logo, a sort of hero text in the middle here with a call to action. This sort of graphic here looks like there's lots of different images. We have a search area and then we're into um, products, more information. Okay, so it's different sort of elements. So what I would look to do here is take each of these sections. So this block here with these parts, this separate block here, then we have the footer. So I break all of these into individual sections. And then as we move along, see what parts we can repeat and use throughout. But in this first video, we're just gonna get the sort of basic part of our page set up and maybe start to really work on this first top section just here up to just before this search box. So let's jump back into Atom now and start to wireframe out these first few parts. So we won't worry about adding the um, actual HTML um, set up for the page just yet. We're just gonna work on this first part. So I'll choose the nav element up here. So this would correspond to this whole area um, across the top. Well, actually we should probably put a header um, before this and then put a nav element for this part just here. So we'll just go back, we'll put the header tag just here. So this is the HTML5 header tag. And then inside that, we're gonna put our nav tag. And then I'll put a div in here with a class of logo. And that's where we'll add our logo. So we can quickly see what elements we have here. So these are drop down menus. So we're looking to how we'll add the drop down. They're all drop downs actually. So all four of these are drop downs, and we have two different style buttons over here. So we'll make a different um, div for each of these. So first we have our drop downs. So we'll just add a, a div like this just to separate it out. And that's so we can list those. And then we'll have one over here. there will be our buttons. So we could go ahead now actually and just add these in. So we have login and get started. So we'll just put it in like this for now. And then we have our drop downs. Now there's a number of different ways you could go about doing drop downs. Now I'm looking at the way these are structured um, they have a bit more design in here than most, and they're all, are they all different? Yeah, they're all different. So there's not too much of this we can um, repeat, but the actual elements themselves we can, we can do. So to begin with, we'll just put these links in um, as plain links, and then we'll go about adding the dropdowns um, just after that. So because we have dropdowns, the way I'm thinking it at the moment is to put each of these as a separate div rather than a link element straight away. So we'll put a, a, a class of dropdown just here. And then we'll structure it in a way that we have the link just here. So what's the first one called? Sell online. And then underneath that we'll have a div that is the dropdown. And we'll just call that drop down content for now. Now the way I like to, to work on these sort of um, designs is to get something on the page first and, and relatively quickly 
and then load it up and then see what we need to do to improve it. So where I've called this um, menu drop downs, drop down, drop down content, I'll probably change these class names as we move forward. But it helps to start putting something down, or I find anyway, to put something down early so you can then reference back to this and start to build out your CSS. And anywhere you start to see um, different sorts of styling repeat itself, that's when you know that that should be a separate class. So for example, if we find that we're using um, a similar color, so let's see we have this dark um, gray color just here, if we find that's repeating, I'd probably make a separate class up in my um, CSS, well, I haven't added it yet, but say I add some CSS over here. If I find that I'm using this color um, over and over again, I'll probably say dark gray. Um, let's think of a, maybe like a seven, seven. And then I'll add this in here. So each time I want to use that color, I can just use this same dark gray rather than having to write it out again and again and again, or even add it into the styling for drop down content. But the main thing of CSS is just keeping organized and structured and trying to think ahead as much as you can. But anyway, without getting distracted by the styling just yet, let's go back to um, just working out this first page. So where we have sell online, fundraise, customize and explore, let's just copy and paste these. So this is the container for the dropdown. So if we'll just say dropdown content, and then we'll copy this uh, section. So we have the next one, the next one, so it should be four. So we have our four, and I'll just change the names here. So we've got fundraise, customize, and explore. Okay, so we'll save this now. Now, obviously this isn't gonna be exactly what we want just yet, but this will just help us to get an idea of what we have. So let's just open this up. Okay, so th this right now obviously looks nothing like what we have here, but you can see that we start to build out this bit of structure. So the next part we're gonna do in this video is just start to add some base CSS and HTML um, tags that you would have on any page, um, just to, so we can get something a little bit more structured up here. So we'll start by adding a doc type like this, spell that correctly. Now this just tells the um, page that we're gonna be using HTML5, and then we start by opening up our page just here, then we create a header tag or head tag. And then inside this, normally I'd wanna first start to put some meta tags now, there's a number of different meta tags that you um, would probably have on every site. So things like this, you'd have UTF-8. Um, and another one would probably be um, to fix your display on mobile so that it doesn't show the desktop display. It zooms in um, to the width of your mobile screen. And this is one of those tags that you can never quite remember the correct um, way it's written. But here's the viewport tag here, so it basically just sets the screen so it um, isn't uh, zoomable on mobile but it fits the screen correctly. Um, so this is also where you want to have your styling. Um, so you can use CSS directly in here like this or you can call an external um, page. But for this example we're just going to put it directly into the page just here. So again we've got our, our header so this is going to be the styling that will be applied just here. But just before we get onto that I'll close off our head tag and open up the body tag. So if you're familiar with HTML, you'll know exactly how this works. If not, um, I'll just explain it quickly. So we have all these tags just here. So the header is where you'd have things like styling, um, setting up the page for SEO, and sometimes you'd add JavaScript here, but normally you'd add that at the bottom of the page. And inside the body, this is where all of your core sort of um, content that wants to be displayed onto the page. So things like div tags, header tags, section tags, all the tags that you would need really, so where all the content um, displayed in the body of the page will be. So then at the very bottom down here we'll close off the body and finally we'll close off the HTML page as well. So if we save this again you won't see anything different um, but it just sets up the page a little bit more nicely as you can see it's the same. Um, but we'll just go through now and add some basic CSS to get a display a little bit more like this. So for our header we want to set a margin of zero and auto. So this will basically remove any set margin on the header and center it in the page. Um, but before that, we want to just go and make sure that we remove any default margins or padding on the body itself, which is the whole um, HTML page. So just like this. 
Now there's a number of CSS frameworks you can use such as Normalize that go through and do things like this for um, all of the sort of different ways that some browsers um, have their default HTML styling, which I would recommend using. But for this example, again, I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible. Um, so with our header, I'm going to set a max width of, say, 1,200 pixels. Um, so if we refresh this again now, oh, wrong, wrong site, we can see that this would actually be centered now um, across the middle of the page. So it'd probably go from about here to here. Um, but we'll next work on aligning these. So for this, we're going to be using something called the Flexbox. Now, again, I won't go into this too much detail right now, um, but this is a great way to sort of style elements on your page. So to, do, to use it, all you just say is display flex, and then we can use this um, really good um, CSS attribute called justify content. Now for this, we're going to be using one called space between. So if we go back and have a look now, you can see that it's moved these elements from one side of the screen to the other. So it's essentially pushed all the space in between these elements and it fills up the width of the page. Now what you can see right away is that we have, uh, where well they have this separated just here, we need to make sure that our actual menu items are separated as well. And then we can add a little bit of a gap um, between this. Now, one thing I wanna mention as well is if you look at this site, on mobile, so if we just open up the developer tools and click this little icon here, which lets you see um, how this site would appear in different browsers. So if we just move this to the side, it's a great way to quickly see how your site will look in mobile. So you can see your, your menu here and the different elements. Now towards the end of this series, we will look at actually adding these um, elements so that your site can be responsive for mobile as well. But to begin with, we're gonna focus purely on the desktop rendering. So let's go back and add the styling we need just for the start of this page. So let's make sure that our elements appear side by side. So we'll go back over here, go to our nav, and we wanna use flex again. And you can see this now has made it so that our drop down items and our right sort of menu buttons are side by side. So now we need to go and do this again for our menu items. So what I'll do here is call my nav and then say menu drop downs, display flex. And then one more thing whilst we're here, because these items just here are drop down menus, we don't want them to be shown um, without anyone hovering over them. So we'll just say nav, drop down content, display none. So if we go back now and reload this, you can see that we have something a little bit like this. Obviously it's nowhere near designed as this yet, um, but we just wanna add in a little bit of spacing in between these two elements. So we'll go back and we'll grab the class name here, so right buttons, and we'll add a margin to the left. So we'll say nav, right buttons, margin left. For now, we'll just say 20 pixels and see how this looks. Okay, so this is closer to what we wanted, um, but let's just space these items out a little bit more. So if, for example, in between these menu items and in between these buttons just here. So what we're gonna use for this is call our menu dropdowns. And then in here, we'll use the link and say padding right 15 pixels and then the same in the right buttons padding right 15 pixels now what this will actually do is slightly move these items off center so because we're adding it to the right hand side every time this one after explore is going to add extra spacing just here and the same thing after get started so you'll see what i mean just here where this spacing now is slightly off. So if we use our developer tools, take away the uh, device changer here, and we'll just move this back down so we've got more space. If we just take this select element tool, you can see that explore has this element just here and the same thing for get started. Now what we're gonna do for now is just add a extra class in here called remove padding 
and this will just say padding 0 and we'll apply this exactly to these classes um, so which one was that explore and get started but a better way to do this would be to use um, a thing called the nth selector which basically lets you um, run little commands using CSS so if we check now, we should find that the padding has been removed. Let's just make sure that we save this. So what we can find here, the reason this hasn't added it just yet is because the hierarchy of these items, so you can see here we just have one class name, but because we have a number of layers in, so we're calling nav, menu dropdowns, and then the link, it isn't, it's still applying this over the top of this item just here. So one quick way you can remove that is by adding extra elements just here, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. You can have sort of a number of errors if you find that you're overwriting things over time, so it's not a good habit to get into. Um, it's definitely not. Um, but for this example, again, they keep it very, very simple. Um, so what you'll find now is this should be exactly what we want. Yeah, so this is nice and evenly spaced. Um, so one thing we want to do next is just add a bit of spacing from the top. As you can see on this one, we have more spacing here. And we'll take their, um, their logo, just so we can have this as an example. So this is their logo just here. So we want to take note of the width here, so it's 165 pixels. So we'll just copy this element. So down here where we have our logo, we'll paste in this, which is an inline SVG. Okay, so it's 165 pixels. So if we go to logo, SVG width 165 pixels. I'll make sure we just fix that there and then save. We can see we have the logo here, logo here, but now let's make sure that we center these. So, as you can see, this is slightly out of line with that. So, another good thing with the developer tools, you can test different styles straight in the page. So, if we add another item just here called align items and center, you can see this is a really powerful way that you can align things vertically, so this lines it up to be centered. So what I'd also do as well is adjust the height um, to be, let's see what we've got here, it's probably around 70 or 80, but everything's nicely centered inside there. So we'll copy these and add these to our page, so we'll go up to the top. So if we refresh this now, we can see that whilst we're very far away um, from getting here, we can see we're starting to wireframe out the basis of this site. So in the next video, we'll start to work on creating this hero section just here, and these um, this design here with these different images. We use Unsplash as a provider to find images that we can use. This will appear in exactly the same way. So if we just zoom out, we can get an idea of just how far this stretches. Okay, so this is the width that they've used, so we'll find out what that is and do something very similar. And we'll add more designs, uh, we'll have more styling so that we have our drop down items just here and these button styles. So that's what we'll start to work on in the next part of this series. Thanks for watching, and if you made it all the way through to the end of this video, 